What's up everybody? My name is Brad and today I've got another book review for you and I'm going to be talking about those who go forth into the empty place of gods. Now, this is a novella by Curtis M. Lawson and Doug Rinaldi and it's put out by Word Horror. Um, I was lucky enough to get an ARC copy of this from Curtis uh, for a review. He signed it for me which is really cool. Um, I believe the release date for this is January 15th of this month. Uh, so in about a week from now, it will be available for purchase. Um, I'm going to go ahead and read the back uh, description real quick, and then I'll give you my thoughts and stuff on the book. Uh, Brewster Gilligan, an underachieving genius, believes that his loss on a television quiz show is the worst thing to ever happen to him. Little does he know that the phrase he answered with, a bit of trivia he remembered from his dead grandfather, was a scrap of forbidden knowledge that would trigger a cabal of dangerous immortals to hunt him down. Uh, so first and foremost, I want to start with the introduction uh, in the book, and it's by Jared Collins. I believe Jared Collins is a musician. I don't know if he's a writer as well, uh, but he talks about in the introduction this concept of nothing and how um, artists, you know, whether you're creating art or music or, you know, if you're writing books or TV shows or making movies, that all these ideas have to come from somewhere. Um, you know, and basically they're coming from nothing. And nothing is, it's not just nothing, it's actual this thing, this maybe entity or something where all these ideas are being drawn from. Uh, he sort of describes it like, um, you know, whoever's coming up with the idea, you know, they're reaching back in their mind and they're actually physically grasping and pulling this idea from nothing into their mind where they can, you know, write it in a book or compose it to a piece of music or a piece of cinema or whatever it may be. So it sort of describes this concept of nothing as sort of something we can't even really comprehend. Uh, sort of the opposite of nothing, it's everything. It's in all these ideas and things, you know, whether it's an architect uh, creating a design for a skyscraper, you know, he got that idea from nothing for what it should look out, what it should look like, how it should be laid out. And it's sort of a fascinating concept. And in here he, he talks about, um, like I said, he was a, he's a musician and he wrote a song called The Butcher of the Nine Lunar Mansions. Uh, and his band is the Mississippi Bones. And I actually went to go listen to this song uh, just a few minutes ago before I re started recording this. And I'll put a link to the song down in the description too. Uh, but at least the name of the song, because he said the lyrics don't have anything to do with sort of the, the title. But at least the name of the song was sort of the concept that they went off for this book. And I liked what he said at the very end of the introduction. It's sort of chilling uh, and when you think about it. Uh, it says, still don't believe me? Then trust your mom. She's been telling you the truth since you were a scared little kid hiding under your covers at bedtime. Remember? She told you nothing's in your closet. Nothing's hiding under your bed. Nothing's waiting in the dark to come and get you. And she was right. Uh, so, like I said, this, the concept of this book is sort of playing off nothing, of pulling things from nothing, you know, out of the cosmos or wherever this nothing would be. And um, that's sort of what this book plays off of. Uh, like I said, our main character here is Brewster Gilligan. Uh, he's basically a genius, uh, but he hasn't really done anything with his life. Um, you know, he goes to play trivia at the bar with his friends. Um, you know, he drinks beer. His apartment's not that great. You know, he doesn't. He's not rich. He doesn't have a bunch of money. Um, he's a bit of a narcissist. Uh, he believes he's better than everybody he's around because he is so much smarter than everybody. Uh, but like it says on the back, he's on this quiz show, sort of like. Jeopardy or something along those lines and he's going for this record of being on there the longest and you know he utters this phrase as one of the answers and it sort of triggers these events that have been set up um, it's this plan that's been put in place long before he was ever on this game show uh, someone's been pulling strings to get him to this point to say this phrase on national television uh, to set off this chain of events and this book it was it was a roller coaster ride. Uh, sort of, you know, the beginning where Brewster's on this television show were sort of inching up and inching up the roller coaster. And as soon as he utters this phrase um, into existence, it's like we drop off and it's just a wild, unstoppable ride 
after that till we get to the end. Um, it's like I said, super imaginative. Um, there's things in here I haven't read really anywhere else. Um, so lots of creative props for their imagination for this. Um, it's action packed. It's nonstop. It's full of cosmic horror. Um, if you like cosmic horror at all, like Lovecraft and the Cthulhu mythos and things, I think you'll really dig this book. Uh, plays a lot with the cosmic aspects of it. Um, there's some great kill scenes in the book that I really enjoyed. Um, really original things I hadn't really seen before anywhere else. And they were super bloody and graphic and gory, but they had that nice cosmic twist to them that sort of made them otherworldly. You know, it wasn't just someone getting shot or someone getting stabbed. Um, you know, graphic things happen to them, but otherworldly things happen with the deaths that I really enjoyed and appreciated. And I liked that this was a novella um, because Brewster Gilligan, our main character, he's not a very likable person. Like I said, he's a narcissist. He thinks he's better than everybody. Uh, he's a bit of an a-hole. Um, so it being in the format of a novella, I believe it was like 92 pages or so. Yeah, 92 pages. Um, being it at that length, uh, it was more palatable to have our main character being a person that we don't really care for, not because he's poorly written or anything. The writing is great. It's just because he's not a likable character. So we're not, well, we sort of do root for him to win because the people he's up against are even more detestable characters. Uh, but it was very, it was more palatable to have that in a shorter book than like a 400 page novel and things. Like I said, the concepts in here are wild and super imaginative. Uh, the, the nine lunar mansions, uh, they're sort of guardians to those. And the ones we did get to see, I really liked all of those. Um, I don't really want to give too much away, uh, but it sort of reminded me of, they were sort of superheroes with these powers. Uh, and each one, each individual person was different, uh, but they're sort of these, like it says on the back, uh, these immortal beings who are guarding something. And they were each... Uh, they were each one separately was really cool um, how they were described what they looked like what their sort of powers were and overall i really enjoyed the story um, i gave it four stars four out of five stars um, like i said it's a wild widely imaginative super creative it was action-packed a lot more action-packed than i was thinking um, you know sometimes with cosmic horror it's sort of a slow burn and then you get to the big reveal of the the entity or the creature or god or whatever at the end but like I said, once the, the game show is over and Brewster utters those words, it's just like dropping off the roller coaster and it's nonstop until the end. Um, the ending was really climactic. I liked the ending. It was very epic in scale, um, very sort of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, sort of the, the world is at stake. The existence of mankind is at stake at the end. There's a lot riding on what's going on and what's going to happen in the, the final showdown, if you will. So I really liked all of it. It was a great read, a fun read. Um, this is the first time I've ever read anything by Curtis Lawson or Doug Rinaldi. Uh, but I do have, where is it? Here it is. Um, I do have Curtis Lawson's other book, Blackheart Boys Choir, that I'm going to be getting into soon. I've heard good things about this one as well. Um, and this one sort of leaves off on an ominous note, uh, sort of hinting that there could possibly be a sequel to it, maybe. Um, but overall, I really, really enjoy this. Like I said, I gave it four stars. Um, it's Those Who Go Forth Into the Empty Place of Gods by Curtis M. Lawson and Doug Rinaldi, available on January 15th of this year uh, from Word Horror. Uh, but that's all I really have to say about it. But like I said, four stars. If you're into cosmic horror, uh, novellas uh, with lots of action and horror graphic scenes in it, I think you'll really enjoy this. Uh, so you should pick it up if you get a chance. Uh, but that's all I have to say about this. Uh, so thanks, Curtis and Doug, for sending this my way. I really appreciate it. Uh, that's all I have for you all today. Again, my name is Brad. Thanks for spending your time with me, and I'll talk to you all later. Bye.